Hello everyone, and welcome back to Soccer Unboxing. So today I have a figure that I wasn't really planning on reviewing um, because it wasn't in my top 9 for 2023, but I feel like I should have made this as an honorable mention and I just decided this figure looks amazing. It's a sweet theme figure, so I might as well do a review on it. Um, it the box it came in was a lot bigger than I expected, so I'm going to attempt to show it on camera. So let us get into which figure I'll be reviewing today. So yes, right here I have this massive box. When I saw this come in, I'm like, oh my god. I mean, the quality is excellent. I love this design overall. And this is, of course, the Hatsune Miku 1715th anniversary version by Good Smile, or as I like to call her, and I feel like most people will call her Strawberry Miku. So yes, I fell in love with this design, the whole sweets theme. Of course, I had to add it for my sweet theme collection, and of course, I do have the Ninjaroid version of this design. So yes, I'm very excited to open her up for you all today. Um, and of course, I do kind of have like a pink theme going on. I actually don't have anything with strawberry besides these um, strawberry heart earrings. Um, so I thought, you know, kind of get close to sort of, you know, the pink vibes a little bit, so yes. So let me get into unboxing this one and putting her down because this is very heavy and let us of course get into the general information about this figure. So going into some general information about this figure, so this figure was manufactured by Goodsmog Company and very surprisingly for how grandiose of a figure this is, she released on time on December 25th, 2003. So now we're moving on to the dimensions of this figure. So she is a 1 7 scale figure measuring roughly 11.31 inches tall and they even provided a width, so she is 12.48 inches wide, so definitely a quite tall figure as well as a quite wide figure. So now we're moving on to where I bought this figure from. So I actually got her off of Ninin Game. I switched from Good Small US's website because it was cheaper on Ninin Game. Um, I'm gonna get into why I regret doing that a little bit later. Um, so yeah, on their website. I did use a bit of my voucher points, so the total for this figure base price was $271.41 USD. The shipping, I used EMS for this, which came out to $60.35 USD. And the grand total for this figure was $331.76. So yes, while it is nice, of course, that Ninin Game gives a shipping cost, it's not exact. Um, sometimes, you know, it's fine, they won't charge you extra, but in this case, I was charged extra. So they sent me an invoice um, and I had to pay uh, $44.36 USD and then there were some handling fees. So the total for that was um, $46.13, which, you know, kind of hurts. So pretty much the grand total for this figure came out to $377.89 USD terrible um i should have maybe just kept my good small us pre-order i'm not too sure what the difference would be or you know could have bought her off of good small global but at the time i didn't quite know that um they don't take paypal up front compared to the us website so yeah that really sucked and yeah unfortunately this was at the time when the pre-orders on the global website for this figure were closed so i couldn't quite you know switch over to that so yeah i definitely really overpaid for this figure immensely at the end of the day and so as usual i do provide ami ami shipping costs thanks to some my figure collection user comments um so yeah very expensive shipping you're looking at an extra 100 usd roughly for ems if you do want to get this figure right away um of course if you don't just put it on surface and wait a couple of months it's honestly you know it'll save you a lot of money in the long run and i'm also going to throw in the figure box size as well as what ami ami box size she would come in this box is absolutely crazy so it's probably going to be more on the 140 to 160 box size it's just crazy so yeah, I hope this information does help, you know, if you're thinking about getting her from Ami Ami. Ami. 
So here we have the massive box right here. So it's very wide considering it almost takes up all of this little rolly table that I have right here, but it looks so nice. You have a very nice pattern to it. You have some sides with the original illustration on it, which I really do appreciate. And yeah, it's, it's an amazing box overall. So um, I'm gonna get into opening it. Um, it does open like a binding box. So it has like a little flap that you kind of pull up. And I think, yeah, and you can see the big original artwork right here, which is again, stunning. She looks so cute. So yes, um, I believe it opens, yeah, it opens up from the side that I just showed you. So yeah, um, there's three pieces of tape. So I'm gonna get to opening her up right now. And here she is in all her glory and the base is super massive um, and yeah, already looking from the face, it looks excellent. So yeah, there's definitely a lot to this figure. Um, I don't seem to see any of those little twist ties that are included with some figures that are especially like this big. I'm surprised about that. But yeah, so let me open her up and figure from the blister packaging. Okay, so struggle a little bit, and it turns out there were twist ties on this figure, which I didn't notice. Um, so needless to say, there was two on here. One of them I managed to like unravel without having to actually cut it, but the other one, for some reason, they literally tucked it like underneath like the loop, and I, I had to cut it off because it was really you know annoying. Um, like I completely understand how big of a figure this is, um, but yeah, so. Now I'm gonna finally take this out of the box. And so starting off, we have the massive plate base and it looks gorgeous. It glossy, um, the writing with the chocolate and even like the strawberry um, jelly on here is um, raised a little bit, which is a nice touch. It's not just flat. The little macaron looks super cute. And yeah, so far base, very gorgeous. And it kind of has this little nice ribbon on the back that's looking like it's a little bit metallic, which is nice. So it kind of raises, you know, the plate up. It's not just flat, which I think is neat. So yeah, I'm just going to put this little one down for the moment. So yeah, unfortunately, I have to move the box to the floor just because that's how big it is across like the table. Um, so here we have Miku. And already I can say that she looks like this looks amazing. Um, this design I really love overall. So far, yeah, um, from my first impressions and quick little scan through of the figure, it's looking pretty good. I don't notice anything wrong with the paint or anything. Yeah, I just, again, I really love this design. So I'm gonna quickly look at the instructions to see, you know, what, you know, what I should do first. See, so yeah, of course, first things first, you know, Putting the figure on the base. Um, so yeah, she has a um, clear peg with a you know metal peg on there, as well as a little metal peg on the back of the uh, piece of the dress. So I'm just. Okay, and there we go. So pretty simple. Um, I did use the protective packaging because the back pieces of her skirt kind of rub up against the plate and I just didn't want anything to scrape or anything. So yeah, I used that. 
Um, wasn't too bad. I did have to push the back skirt a little bit forward just to put it in the peg. Um, so yeah, first step is pretty easy overall this time. So yes, um, next up, of course, we have Miku's massive pigtails. Like, oh, I mean, they're, they're still in the plastic, but like, they're larger than my hand. I mean, this is Miku we're talking about. Okay, so yeah, there are two little shrink resisting pegs in the hair um so you know to prevent the hole from shrinking and just you know to prevent like a very tight fit um and it does say uh be careful of color transfer and scuffing when attaching and removing these parts so of course i'm going to be using protective packaging once again um to resolve that issue now what the instructions doesn't tell you and what i have seen on my figure collection is that you can actually take off the head um, there was a piece of plastic like around uh, Miku's neck, which I f is a good indicator that the head can come off. So yeah, some people were saying, oh, um, it's easier to take the head off and put the pigtails on rather than just putting them on while she's on the base. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna, <laughs> we're just gonna take her head off. Thankfully, it comes out pretty easily. She, she looks precious. Like this is very accurate to... Um, the pictures, and it's absolutely gorgeous. So yeah, I'm gonna um, remove these little guys and then put the um, the pigtails on this way. It's gonna be tricky for me to show it maybe during the assembly, hopefully not, um, but yeah. Okay, so yeah, they come like this. Absolutely gorgeous. I love the sculpt, the flow, the little flowers, which I feel like you have to be careful with. Um, just in case, if you bump them, you could scuff them quite a bit. And yeah, they have this, um, it's a massive piece of star from like stuffed right in between there. Uh, just for support, just because of how hollow, you know, the insides are. So yeah, there's one. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to try and figure out how to do this because I'm, I'm nervous about like um, how my work area is right here. Um, yeah, very gorgeous. I do like the sort of like, um, you know, green on top and then it goes down to like yellowish at the tips. So, you know, I'm going to pick up Miku's, Miku's head right here. And yeah, it shouldn't be too difficult. I might also use the protective packaging, um, to kind of, you know, because, um, it, it there is the red, um, bows just in case. I I'm paranoid about pain transfer. Granted, I feel like you won't notice, but at the same time, I want to prevent it as much as possible. So, needless to say, putting Miku's pigtails in was, to me at least, because I'm a very careful person when assembling figures, was a nightmare. Even with taking her head off um, from the rest of her body and just trying to put those pigtails in, I feel like that the peg holes are just too small for the pegs to fit in. Um, when you notice in my assembly, um, I really don't show me just pushing it in like all in one go. I freaking struggled. I had to get on my hands and knees and really just like push it in. Um, yeah, and because I looked in it and I feel like the hole was just a little too small for the pigtails, which was annoying. It was a struggle. So I'm like, I'm kind of glad I did the, you know, close ups to the best of my abilities. It's not going to look perfect. I do apologize for that, but um, I just struggled with showing it on camera. Um, yeah, but they look gorgeous. Um, they do kind of, um, they do kind of like lean a little bit on her outfit. So um, when disassembling this figure, um, and even when you put the head back on, definitely you know protective packaging um, all around the outfit. Oh my god, <laughs> definitely like the hardest part of the assembly. Um, and I've just been struggling recently with the figures I've gotten with just putting parts into places because of how tight the fit is overall so yeah definitely the hardest part is stressful they're on i don't want to disassemble her 
anytime soon. Um, I'm gonna dread the day whenever I move out of um, the house I'm in and I have to disassemble and reassemble her because I'm not, I'm not gonna enjoy dealing with that. But yes, moving on to finally the last two items we have, of course, the fork that she comes with, um, a chrome on, you know, the whole gold chrome, as well as I believe, yeah, red as well as green and the bow. Uh, bow is pretty flat overall, just simple um, white and red, which I think is fine. Maybe a little bit of shading, but I think it's alright for what it is. Um, it even has like Miku written on the back of it. So yes, slowly turning this around. This is also very heavy. Um, so yeah, on the instructions, it's it's clear for her hand, but it, on the skirt, um, it does indicate where it's kind of supposed to go, but since it's like black and white, it's like I can't really tell too well. So I'm gonna have to get a little bit on here and take a look. So putting the fork in, not that bad. Um, so there is like a deep gap in her um, her dress that you kind of just push the fork into, which again, I'm not too into just for, you know, the sake of pain transfer. So yeah, um, thankfully it's a, you know, it wasn't too much of a struggle to get in. Um, so it's supposed to kind of hold the fork in place there. Unfortunately, it isn't really like a peg for it on the base and then you kind of just tuck it into her hand so that's not too bad and then the last thing we have is a little support bra with a cute you know flower on there uh, and this is meant to go on this side for one of her pigtails and yeah so not too hard to put in this peg um, it does have like grooves in it to kind of match with the sculpt of the hair and yes, now, I, I don't even want to pick this up right now, um, just because of how heavy it is, and I'm scared to. <laughs> so yes, fully assembled, and again, very massive figure, um, for a 1 7th, by the way. Um, I think this looks fantastic. I really don't notice any, you know, immediate paint defects. I feel like she just looks fantastic overall. Definitely a very big centerpiece and yeah kind of nice to have my big strawberry miku go with my little strawberry miku um i definitely noticed between the two that the hair color is a little bit different um i feel like you can even see a little bit on camera um even if you're that far away but yeah they <laughs> just let me put the two next to each other oh it's i kind of dig it um yeah you know, usually I wouldn't go for multiple, like, copies, different, like, versions, like, either an Android or a scale of the same design, but I love this design so much that I wanted to pick her up. So, yes, yeah, so this was definitely very long. I'm gonna have to definitely cut some parts out. <sighs> God, the assembly was just, like, a pain in the ass when I feel like maybe it shouldn't be, but yeah. So, yeah, there she is completed. I'm definitely gonna have her long-term display because I don't want to put her back in the box anytime soon so yes now let us get into my overview of this figure um and the struggles i had to go to now we're moving on to the box b-roll so i overall really love this box design as well as just the quality of the box in general i feel like for a figure of this cost it should definitely come with a very high quality and very presentable box and yeah this figure definitely met those expectations you have the original artwork plastered on a couple of sides of the box and yeah just the pink and the strawberries on there i think are very cute um i accidentally did rip the top left corner of this box while I was unboxing her. Um, I let it just dangle off the table which caused the rip. So definitely a figure that you know if you want to keep the box quality nice you want to unbox on a very large surface area. Um, and pretty much the only gripe with this box um, which is a given is that the size is absolutely massive. Um, so yeah if you're very short on storage area be very wary of that. 
and yeah just, just to see how large it is it's kind of dangling off the table but still staying on but yeah i love this box design overall very gorgeous and very well made so now we're moving on to the assembly of this figure, which was definitely a lot, which we'll get into on the second and third steps of this figure. So yeah, instructions pretty straightforward overall, starting with the base of the figure, which I absolutely love this plate design. I do like the raised chocolate that they used. And I do like how this base is actually at an angle. It's not just flat on the ground. It helps you see those details on the base, which I do quite like. After that, we have Miku herself, very gorgeous, once again, with the sculpt and the hair as well. I'm definitely going to be showing a lot of this off in this section of the B-roll, because again, I just really love this Miku's design. It's just very cutesy, just the amount of details on the dress look fantastic. And yeah, I feel like pretty accurate to the original illustration overall. So yes, getting this figure onto the base, there's a foot peg right there, as well as one peg in the back that the dress goes into. Um, I did use, of course, protective packaging just to avoid it getting scratched in the back because of that extra little peg right there. So yeah, it's overall pretty easy to put the pegs in. Um, for the dress in the back, you do have to kind of pull it forward to put it in the hole. Um, thankfully, it's pretty, you know, a little bit of a flexible material, so you can pull that forward. And now we are removing Piku's head, which it doesn't tell you in the instructions, but I highly recommend doing for the next step. Um, so we're taking the pegs out of the hair right here, and we're putting in her lovely twin tails. Very nice sculpt and shading on them overall. But an absolutely nightmarish process to put these in. Either the hole on the head is too small or the peg is too large. So I'm just showing this in chunks. Um, me struggling to put it in, me getting it like halfway in like this. And then it should be pretty much flush to the head like this. It's definitely going to be a nightmare to take these out later and I am definitely not looking forward to that. And yeah, I decided to put one of the pigtails in and just put her head back in again using protective packaging because the pigtails do rub up against the outfit and yeah putting the other one in was still also a nightmare i did see some people on my figure collection say that they used a heat gun which i should have used i didn't really think about because i was just so frustrated um, with putting these pigtails in but yeah all said and done thankfully and now we have a slot on the dress that I'm pointing to right there for the fork. Very nice design. I love the chrome on there. I feel like I can actually use this um, to eat fruit, but I'm not because again, expensive figure. <laughs> I don't want to ruin this fork. But yeah, it has Miku's name on the back. I do like the ribbon um, sculpt overall. And yep, yeah, there is this little slot right here that you just have to push the fork into. Um, so that it holds it in place and then you just have to just put it in Miku's hand. It does require a little bit of force and I would be careful not to keep removing this multiple times so you don't scrape anything or scratch anything. But yeah, that was actually pretty easy overall to put in. And lastly, we have this tiny little support with a flower on it, um, which I, you are definitely going to need. Um, her head does tilt to the left side, so for long-term support, I would definitely recommend having this support rod. So yeah, very easy to put on. And then we have this figure, again, nightmarish assembly, at least with the pigtails, all set up and ready to be displayed. Going into B-roll for the figure itself, as you can tell, she takes up so much space on my turntable and that support rod is just hanging over the edge for dear life. But yeah, just to show how massive this figure is overall compared to my tiny little turntable, and overall, I think this is just an absolutely gorgeous and stunning figure overall. The sculpt in her hair and dress are just so fantastically done. Um, thankfully, for the most part, the paint on mine is pretty crisp and clean. I don't notice anything super off, really, like jarringly off. Um, I did know that some people in my figure collection were kind of complaining, saying that theirs had some defects, which is again unfortunate, especially for an over 200 USD figure. That shouldn't really be the case or just be very subtle, I'd say. Um, the plate design I really do like. I like how 
it is raised in some areas, gives that extra little bit of depth. The face on this figure is absolutely adorable. I love how crisp her eyes look and just the placement of them is excellent. The various finishes on this figure are fantastic. I like the gold, red, and green chrome on the fork and the metallic bows. This color of red is just absolutely gorgeous. I couldn't imagine these bows being just a plain old matte red so I'm glad they went the metallic route for them. They just look fantastic and I love that color overall. And yeah, the shading on her hair is very wonderfully done. I kind of like how it gets like a little bit more yellow at the end. Um, and in terms of small little defects on mine, there is kind of an ugly seam line in this part right here, if you can tell. Um, decals on the dress, like these strawberries. Um, notes, music notes look very nicely done. And yeah, I'll probably get to um, some little issues on mine which again kind of subtle but when you look up close it's unfortunate that it's there but thankfully not like very jarringly noticeable at a distance so yeah macaron also very nice sculpt by the way looks very appetizing so yeah a little bit of bleeding in this area right here which is a little bit unfortunate again you won't notice it until you look close and then lastly very tiny little scratch on mine but other than that um very gorgeous figure, especially at a distance. Size comparison time, so we have of course the 1 7th Hatsune Miku 15th Anniversary version next to the 15th Anniversary version Nendroid, same character design of course. Next is the 1 8th scale figure of Phosphophyllite by Good Small Company. I absolutely adore this figure by the way, very gorgeous overall. After that we have a 1 7th scale by Ribos, which is the Miyako um, from Princess Connect Redive figure. After that is going to be a 1 6 scale figure, which is the Mauve figure by Native and Rocket Boy. And then lastly, of course, we got to end off with the massive 1 4th scale figure, which is, of course, the Hatsune Miku My Dear Bunny version by Freeing. So, yeah, overall, though, this 1 7 scale figure is absolutely massive, even next to the 1 4th. So going into my overall thoughts for this figure, even with that very hefty price tag, I am overall pretty happy with the way that this figure turned out. The overall sculpt work on the hair and the dress and the outfit in general just came out so fantastic and very well done. There's some very nice shading, um, especially in the hair and in some parts of the dress. Um, I do like that shading on her hair like the different greens and how it gets a little bit more yellow towards the ends. I feel like that this figure is overall very accurate to the original illustration as well as the promotional photos. So and of course I appreciate a figure with different paint finishes so you have chrome, you have metallic, you have matte, and you even do have glossy in some areas and I feel like it's mostly on the base. So now moving on to dislikes and nitpicks, so really uh, just a minor nitpick is just the box size in general. Um, very large, it's really just the size, the design again I love, um, but if you're very short on storage um, it's just something to be wary about if you decide to pick this figure up. Next we have some paint defects on the figure. Thankfully mine really didn't have anything too noticeable or very large really. Um, again, I just mostly had a little bit of paint bleeding um, around these small bows on the dress and just that tiny little minute, very unnoticeable little scratch on her hair. But again, from my figure collection comments, it seems that people had much bigger issues on their figures than mine. And especially for the price, we shouldn't have to be noticing those issues on an over $200 figure. And lastly, pretty much my biggest gripe with this figure are putting in those freaking pigtails. We shouldn't have to struggle that hard to put those into the head. Those shrink resistant pegs really didn't do much, to be honest. Either again, the holes in her head are too small or the peg is way too large. And even with taking her head off to make it a little bit easier, I do worry of course about breaking some of the little um, decorative pieces on her hair as well as maybe even her hair strands and you know I've seen people in my figure collection take a heat gun to those pegs which we shouldn't have to do just in case we damage against such an expensive figure so yeah assembly for those pigtails was definitely my least favorite part 
of this figure. So now going into aftermarket prices. Now I'm going to base this off of Good Smile Global's price um, that does not have any discounts. So on Good Smile Global, this figure was roughly $290.72 USD. Um, with the fly rate shipping, it brings us to a little bit over $300. So yeah, um, just to put that into perspective, this was almost a $300 figure if you got her off of Good Small Global. Starting off with Yahoo Japan auctions, this figure um, has gone down a little bit from that $290 price tag. Um, and yeah, looking to be pretty much a little bit under retail and close to retail on there. Again, just be wary of the shipping costs if you do decide to pick her up from Yahoo Japan auctions. Going into one listing on Mercari JP, someone was selling her for 50,000 yen. Again, extremely expensive and, you know, definitely not worth that price tag. No one was selling her on my figure collection. Um, I did see some people say they were selling it on eBay. Um, prices on screen, again, extremely expensive. Someone almost selling her for $400, which is absolutely ridiculous. One listing on Mandarake for 35,000 yen, so, you know, someone was selling her for cheaper than retail. Um, but again, the freaking shipping costs for this one on uh, Mandarake, very, very expensive. And I also do want to mention Good Smile US's website, but I really wouldn't recommend getting her off of there, even if you do live in the United States, because um, the freaking shipping cost, even then, is very expensive and the tax on top of that is a big kicker see i'm gonna pop them up on screen right now it is absolutely absurd um so yeah at the end of the day just buy your figures off of good small global um for that flat rate shipping and last of course i will mention ami ami she is discounted on there for thirty-five thousand nine hundred yen so you're saving quite a bit of money overall so yes, I can't say exactly how much this figure is going to be in the very distant future, but um, if you don't mind putting this figure on Surface Mail Premium, um, it's definitely your best bet just to save a lot of money in the long run. And who knows, maybe if no one decides to buy this figure off of Ami Ami, um, they'll eventually put her on sale where you can hopefully get her for much cheaper. And I do admit, while I do love this figure overall, I do wish she was less than her uh, Good Small Global retail price, and by no means am I an expert on how a figure should be priced at, especially because of material cost, paint work, just the labor that goes into these figures. Um, and again, especially because people have been noticing paint defects and such on their figures. Again, thankfully mine are noticeable, but some people have had it quite worse, which is very unfortunate, especially for a almost $300 one seven scale figure. So yes, I apologize for that little rant right there, but I just want to be honest and just transparent with how I feel about certain things. Again, I just try my best to be transparent and observant and to provide as much info as possible to those who are interested in picking up any of the figures that I review. So yes, overall, um, I do hope that she goes down quite a bit in the aftermarket um, in the very distant future and I overall hope that this review helps in your decision on whether or not you want to pick up this figure. So here she is all assembled and I am definitely holding this with two hands because I don't want this to fall at all. She is pretty hefty. Um, also, I do apologize for the creaking, if you hear it. Um, yeah, I, it's mostly in the back where her dress is kind of up against the base. And yeah, overall, again, sculpt, paintwork, and details, and different um, paint finishes. Absolutely stunning overall. I'm very happy with that. So pretty much, probably my only big gripe, which is the assembly, at least with her hair. The pigtails were just a nightmare. It's definitely best to just remove her head and just put the pigtails in. And even then, it's a nightmare to put in. But yeah, overall, I am still happy to have her in my collection, even with my complaints about the assembly, because I just love this design so much. And I feel like Good Small did a fantastic job overall with the execution of this figure um, in terms of paint and sculpt and such. So yeah, 
I love this design. Very great to have her for my sweet theme collection. So yeah, that overall concludes this video. Um, I apologize for the b-roll section and even the unboxing section if I had to really cut some stuff out or I didn't show stuff all the way. Again, that's just how much I struggled with at least the pigtails once again. So if you would like to, of course, feel free to take the time to subscribe to my channel to see what other figure and merch related shenanigans I get into next, as well as my just general struggles with assembling these figures so yes thank you all so much for watching i hope you all have a wonderful morning afternoon or night wherever you are and take it easy goodbye